What kinds of cars do you dream about? Exotics? Luxury cars? Performance cars? Classic cars? Well, back in the 50s, if you asked people about their dream cars, they most likely thought about cars like these. This is the annual Pebble Beach Concours in Monterey, California. And this is Joe Bortz. He owns a Chicago nightclub, but his bigger claim to fame is that he is one of the better known collectors of vintage dream cars, American dream cars. And according to Joe, only America can take credit for building genuine dream cars. Dream cars is an American concept, uh, much like apple pie and the hot dog. Uh, it's something that uh, you, if you call a foreign car a dream car, you, you'd have a misnomer. Most major manufacturers built dream cars back in the 50s, either as styling exercises or to publicize their new models, and their design was a reflection of the country's attitude. The car designers after the war uh, were given uh, free reign to uh, produce cars of the future. America was proud. We had just come out uh, from uh, World War II uh, victorious. The mood uh, was such that they wanted the cars to represent the feelings uh, that America had from uh, this, uh, this, this great victory. The Pebble Beach event attracts car lovers from all over the world, perhaps because of the great range of vehicles on display there. And Joe owns several of the most desirable and attention-getting dream cars still existing today. Of course, the car I'm sitting in uh, right now is the 1955 Chrysler Gia Falcon. Uh, all your Chrysler dream cars were of Exner design, and just about all of them were produced by Gia. Gia was uh, an Italian bodybuilder that produced um, the uh, designs of Virgil Exner. They would send over an American chassis, Chrysler, Dodge, DeSoto, and they would uh, produce uh, Exner's uh, dream car design uh, on this particular chassis and return it to the United States. Uh, the Packard over here on my left is the Packard Panther. It's the only one that was made with a removable hardtop. It's set up on a full 1954 Packard Super 8 chassis. The uh, yellow car uh, over there is the 1954 Dodge Gia Fire Arrow Roadster. It's set up on a, a long wheelbase uh, Dodge chassis and uh, is considered to be one of the sleekest uh, designs of the dream cars. The uh, red car on the far end of the field here is the 1956-57 uh, Chrysler Gia Diablo Dart. And the reason it has two names is it was a show car for two years. In 56, it was the Dart, and in 57, they modified it and called it the uh, Diablo with the modifications. Perhaps one of the most fascinating dream cars ever built is this one. Its somewhat unromantic name is the Buick Y-Job. Built by General Motors in 1938, it was the first car to have an electric convertible top, the first concept car to have hidden headlights, and fenders that extended into the doors. Most experts agree this was the first American dream car ever built. There have been countless rumors over the years concerning two dozen dream cars buried somewhere in the desert southwest. Since manufacturers routinely destroy dream cars after getting the required publicity from them due to liability risks, it's surprising that any of them are still left. Is there a dream car treasure trove buried in a mysterious place out west? Hard to say, but collectors like Joe Bortz will undoubtedly someday find it, if it's there. I started about 10 years ago when I found my first dream car accidentally, thinking like everybody else that they didn't exist, and immediately thereafter came across a second one and uh, developed the appetite for it, kind of like somebody going to Las Vegas the first time and winning on their first two bets, uh, they're hooked. 